Welcome to St. Malachy's the Actors Chapel as we celebrate the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Give us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you. Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days the Lord said, The outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great, and their sin so grave, that I must go down and see whether or not their actions fully correspond to the cry against them that comes to me. I mean to find out. While Abraham's visitors walked on farther toward Sodom, 
the Lord remained standing before Abraham. Then Abraham drew nearer and said, Will you sweep away the innocent with the guilty? Suppose there were 50 innocent people in the city. Would you wipe out the place rather than spare it for the sake of the 50 innocent people within it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to make the innocent die with the guilty so that the innocent and guilty would be treated alike. Should not the judge of all the world act with justice? The Lord replied, If I find 50 innocent people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Abraham spoke up again. See how I am presuming to speak to my Lord, though I am but dust and ashes. What if there are five less than 50 innocent people? Will you destroy the whole city because of those five? He answered, I will not destroy it if I find 45 there. But Abraham persisted, saying, What if only 40 are found there? He replied, I will forbear doing it for the sake of the 40. Then Abraham said, Let not my Lord grow impatient if I go on. What if only 30 are found there? He replied, I will forbear doing it if I can find but 30 there. Still, Abraham went on, Since I have thus dared speak to my Lord, what if there are no more than 20? The Lord answered, I will not destroy it for the sake of the twenty. But he still persisted. Please, let not my Lord grow angry if I speak up this last time. What if there are at least ten there? He replied, For the sake of those ten, I will not destroy it.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, you were buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through the faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. Even when you were dead in transgressions and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he brought you to life along with him, having forgiven us all our transgressions, obliterating the bond against us with its legal claims, which was opposed to us. He also removed it from our midst, nailing it to the cross. According to Luke. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone in debt to us and do not subject us to the final trial. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend to whom he goes at midnight and says, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived at my house from a journey, and I have nothing to offer him. And he says in reply from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children and I are already in bed. I cannot get up to give you anything to eat. I tell you, if he does not get up to give the visitor the loaves because of their friendship, he will get up to give him whatever he needs because of his persistence. And I tell you, ask and you will receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. What father among you would hand his son a snake when he asks for a fish? or hand him a scorpion when he asks for an egg. If you then, who are wicked, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. A familiar passage again it speaks to us in our hearts about being persistent. But of course, as we hear the story again and we think about it, it's, well, why? Why does he keep knocking? Well, the first reason is he knows that the other friend has heard him. And the second reason is he knows the other friend has bread. So he stays there and he keeps at it. And ultimately, what he seeks, what he knocks for, what he longs for is fulfilled. The asking is met with a positive response. And friends, it's that same way in our prayer. It's staying persistent. It's constantly going back and knocking because we know he hears us. And we keep knocking because we know he has what it is that we need. It's in the way that we ask and it's in the way that we seek that these things are bestowed upon us, given over to us. So sometimes the response doesn't come immediately. The door isn't always open at first bidding. Sometimes it takes us a while to get what it is that seems to be needed in the moment. 
but we must pay attention also to the time in between the first knock on the door and ultimately the door opening and things giving, being given to us. It gives us time to stop and to say to ourselves, well, how do I ask? Whose priorities do I put first? Is it all about me? Is it about someone else? Is it about God? And the ways that I, I seek, do I exhaust as many possibilities as I can in trying to meet my own needs that I believe God would want me to meet in my life, to fulfill the needs that are there, perhaps even to meet some of the wants that I have. How do I seek? Is it seeking God first, the kingdom before all else? Or is it seeking what only makes my life easier? Seeking what makes me comfortable? Seeking what keeps me complacent? And you see that why there could be a time delay between the first time that we knock and ultimately the time that the door is open and the gift is given. Our prayer gives us that ability to look within and to know what truly motivates us to following God's will, to staying close to God and being a part of the plan of salvation and not just our own plan of, of self-preservation. We're in it together. We're in it as part of the kingdom and we build it. We allow it to become stronger in the ways that we seek, that we ask, and stay persistent in knocking. For he has heard us, and God desires to bestow the gift. Let us profess the faith that unites us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us together offer our petitions to our Heavenly Father. For our church, may the Lord raise up holy men and women to humbly labor on her behalf. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civil leaders, may the Lord guide them in their work promoting justice, peace, and truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are alienated from God and his holy church, May Christ's message of love and healing bring them back into his loving arms. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick in this faith community, may God restore them to the fullness of life and health and liberate them from all that afflicts them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our 
beloved dead. May they come to share in the fullness of Christ's glory and enjoy his favor forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Let us pray. O Lord, grant us, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into the Passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, Saints Malachi and Genesius, Cecilia and Vitus, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours forever and ever. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant peace and unity in accordance with your will, and live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, pour on us the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you, and may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you and your loved ones forever and ever. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thank you.